Hey everyone, I'm Flippin' Kiwi Gamer. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm doing my very first top 10 list. Well, actually I'm doing a top 8 list. I'm sort of copying out a little bit. But I'm looking at a game that I've always loved and it's an awesome game. I'm doing Ratchet and Clank. But more specifically, I'm doing a top 8 most useful weapons in Ratchet and Clank 1. Now, there's tons of awesome weapons in Ratchet and Clank and it's why it's such an awesome game. So, before we get started, there's a few ground rules I think we should cover. Now, you'll notice this is a top 8 list, rather than a top 10 list. And that's for a very good reason, because when you open Ratchet's quick select menu, you notice that there are 8 slots, not 10. So I figured doing a top 8 list made much more sense than you doing a top 10 list. Now, useful to me means weapons that I use to play through the game. Not as exactly the most powerful weapons, but the weapons that I use the most. Another thing is that the Rhino will not be included in this list. And that's for a couple of very good reasons. One, the Rhino costs 150,000 bolts. This should be a crime to charge that much for a weapon. Now I know the Rhino is unbelievably good, but because of its ridiculous price tag, it is pretty much unavailable for most, if not all, of the first playthrough of the game. Plus it's so good that using it kind of feels like cheating and makes the game nowhere near as fun to play. So because of these reasons, the Rhino will not be included in this list. If you don't like it, well, this is my list, so my rules. So without further ado, let's get into the top 8 most useful weapons in Ratchet and Clank 1. The Bomb Glove is the very first weapon that Ratchet can use in the game. And come on, who doesn't like a free weapon? The Bomb Glove is a short range weapon that throws a bomb at enemies that explodes on impact. The Bomb Glove is only really useful early on in the game before other more powerful weapons that outclass the Bomb Glove become available. But don't get me wrong, the Bomb Glove is a great weapon early on, and it's something I found myself turning to quite a bit. And it's free! FREE! The Bomb Glove bombs can kill multiple enemies with one shot, which is great for dealing with large groups of small enemies as one bomb can quickly kill two or three enemies. While the bomb glove is underrated, I believe it's a solid selection to anybody's quick select menu. Ah, the suck cannon. One of the classics that still stands the test of time. I really like the suck cannon, as it's a weapon I find myself using quite a fair bit, even in other Ratchet and Clank games. Tired of the Gadgeton Corporation taking all your hard-earned bolts through vendoring machines? Well, stick it to them with the Suck Cannon. The suck Cannon doesn't use ammo like any other weapon in the game. In fact, it uses your enemies as ammo. How badass is that? The Suck Cannon acts like a giant powerful vacuum cleaner, sucking up smaller enemies which can be used as projectiles to shoot at larger enemies. The Suck Cannon packs quite a punch as well, with it being able to take down most larger enemies in one shot. However, there are some drawbacks to the Suck Cannon's unique ammo system. First of all, it can only hold 5 shots, I mean enemies, at one time, so spraying shots everywhere isn't really a viable strategy. Another drawback of this is that you need to be a regular supply of smaller enemies in the area to be able to be an effective weapon. Despite its obvious flaws, I will defend the Suck Cannon's integrity to the death, because that's how much I love this weapon. The ultimate in small pest control, the Pyrostorator. I think Gadgetron gives the best introduction for the Pyrostorator. Having problems with swarms of small creatures? The Gadgetron Pyrostorator is the answer. This flamethrower device will toast them fast. The Pyrostorator is one of the most useful weapons in the game, as it is acquired very early on, and it's a flamethrower. Enough said. Pyro Restorator is a short range weapon that can either shoot out short bursts of flame or a long continuous stream. The Pyro Restorator is great for dealing with large groups of small enemies as it can hold 240 rounds of ammo and the ammo is dirt cheap being only a bolt each. However because of its extremely short range and lack of power the Pyro Restorator is not something you want to be taking into battle against multiple larger enemies. Shame really because I mean it's a flamethrower. Enough said. The 
Visibomb is a guided missile launcher that gives Ratchet the ability to see through the perspective of the missile and control its flight. Because of this, the Visibomb is really only used for picking off large enemies from a distance. If someone was having trouble with a certain group of enemies, they could probably just sit back and try to pick them off from a distance using the Visibomb, as players have about 50 seconds after launch to find an unsuspecting target. However, I wouldn't recommend this strategy to anyone for two very good reasons. One is that the Visibomb ammo costs 100 bolts each. And I can think of dozens of other things I'd rather spend my hard earned bolts on. The second thing is that what kind of fun is it to sit at the start of the game and just pick off enemies from a distance. As you can tell, I don't really like the Visibomb and it's one that I try and use only when all my other options have been exhausted. Plus, it is only available towards the end of the game so it's only really any help for the last couple of levels. The Glove of Doom was one of my favourite weapons in Ratchet and Clank, so you can imagine how excited I was when I started playing Ratchet and Clank up your arsenal and found out that good old Glove of Doom was back. The Glove of Doom was first available on planet Eudora and cost 7,500 bucks. Basically, the Glove of Doom would fire a small ball which spawned four agents of doom do the bidding of Ratchet and Clank. See those enemies over there? Can't be bothered taking them out? Well, you need not worry, for the Agents of Doom will do your dirty work for you. It's as easy as that. Despite how much I like the Glove of Doom, I know it has a few issues that stop it from being higher on this list. Like, it only holds 10 ammo, the ammo costs 40 bolt each, and the Agents themselves? Well, they're idiots. Come on, attack him. He's right there. Jesus. Do I have to do everything myself in this game? Blaster is a great multi-purpose weapon, and it is easily the best weapon to get early on in the game. The blaster can take down just about any enemy, and is a fantastic weapon, especially for those tough economic times that we've all been experiencing. Although you can spray bullets everywhere and manage to waste all of its 200 shots in one go, ammo for the blaster only costs a single bolt each. If you'll excuse me, there's something I have to do. Alright, here's something I've wanted to do for a long time. Worth it. Although the blaster is a great weapon, and one that I would struggle to play the game without, it is outclassed by some of the other weapons, as it has a limited range, and it isn't exactly going to strike fear in the hearts of any of your enemies. However, it is definitely deserving of its number 3 spot, as it is a weapon that I found myself using constantly in almost any situation. Devastator is an auto-targeting missile launcher which can fire long and short range rockets at enemies. The Devastator was the first weapon that was revealed to gamers with a promotional image of Ratchet wielding the Devastator which later became the artwork for the cover of the US region of the game. The Devastator can also lock onto enemies and can track them which makes it a great weapon for dealing with long range powerful enemies. However, you certainly don't want to be using the Devastator against large groups of smaller enemies when the ammo costs 50 bolts each, and it can only hold 20 rounds. This is what I believe hampers the Devastator, especially later on in the game where the levels are larger, the enemies are tougher, and the Gadgetron vendors are few and far between. The Devastator however definitely deserves its spot at number 2 on this list, because it's a mean lean missile launching machine, and I couldn't imagine beating the game without it. Tesla Claw can be purchased when Ratchet first visits Altanus, and even with the Persuader it costs uh, 30,000 bolts? The Tesla Claw generates electricity which can be aimed and shot with a beam at enemies. The Tesla Claw is most effective against large groups of small enemies or a small group of stronger enemies. The Tesla Claw has larger range than similar weapons such as the Pyrostrum. Even the help menu agrees with me about how kick ass the Tesla Claw is. Using state of the art electrostatic technology, 
The Tesla Claw is the pinnacle of Gadgetron weapons technology. The Tesla Claw sends a powerful stream of charged particles to your nearest foe, destroying it with deadly efficiency. The Tesla Claw will automatically seek a new weapon whenever its current target is obliterated? I found a dictionary definition of obliteration, and it said to destroy every trace of, wipe out completely. Oh. God. It's just as well the Tesla Claw isn't available until later on in the game and it costs so much bolts because I can do entire run throughs of the game with pretty much only using the Tesla Claw and that's why it's the top spot in my top 8 most useful Ratchet and Clank weapons. There you have it, the top 8 most useful weapons in Ratchet and Clank 1. Now I know you probably don't agree with some of this list because this list is my own personal opinions based on personal experiences that I've had playing the game. But if you think that a weapon should be higher or lower on the list, or that another weapon that wasn't on this list should be on it, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll have a look at it. Thanks guys. Hey guys, thanks for watching my video. If you like this video, why not share it around with all your friends and tell them about this little awesome flapping kiwi. Wait a minute. Yeah, yeah no, that kind of works. If you want to see more of my videos, you know, there's a big red shiny button for that, and who doesn't like shiny stuff? You can also follow me on Facebook and Twitter for video updates and a few laughs here and there. Thanks guys, have a good one.